Well, welcome today to St. Paul's United Church of Christ here in downtown Wausau, Wisconsin. And I have called this time Pastors Pondering. This is when I talk about things that are relevant, I think, things that are even in the news, perhaps, uh, things that are th certainly theologically based. And, um, you know, I can't help but notice there seems to be this huge disconnect these days. And of course, we're all experiencing that as we're coming off of the COVID-19 times and we've all been kind of locked away from family and friends and we've not been able to go into hospitals or nursing homes and some of you haven't been in church for a while because you don't feel safe being here and we understand all that completely, but it does beg some questions. And the questions that seems to beg is, how do we get in our lifetime to this place where we're so divided on absolutely everything. I don't really understand that and I don't know why I don't understand that. Of course, I've been told I've been naive and maybe that's the case. And that's fine. There's a text from Matthew that I'd like to share with you and we'll talk about this just a little bit more. It's from Matthew 9 and I'm going to start out verse 35. Jesus went around visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues. He preached the good news about the kingdom and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. As he saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them because they were worried and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to the disciples, The harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that we, he will send out workers to gather in the harvest. That ends my text uh, for this day. You know, um, I was raised on the farm and I know a little bit about sheep. Matter of fact, that was my first 4-H project. And over the years, that was one of my boys 4-H projects. Uh, you know, sheep are interesting animals, I will have to admit. There's lots of misnomers about sheep, that they're dumb as a box of rocks. It's really not the case. That they'll follow you everywhere. Well, there is a little bit of truth maybe to that. But there is nothing more kind-hearted and tender than a sheep. Now it is true, they do need a little bit of guidance. And so that brings me to my thought for the day. Patrick Green was known by his neighbors as a professional, professed atheist. He was notorious for threatening to sue the county each year where he lived because they had a manger scene in the courthouse at Christmas time. Green says that his experience with Christians the years was narrow-minded individuals who treated him unkindly. And went on to say, my wife and I have never had a Christian do anything nice for us. Just the opposite. They are critical. They are self-righteous. They are narrow-minded. Well, that kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? However, that changed when 63-year-old Green learned that he had a detached retina. He was forced to give up driving. He resigned himself to his impending blindness. Eye surgery was going to cost about $20,000. He did not have the insurance nor the money to pay for even groceries, let alone that huge bill. Jessica Cree, a member of a local church, learned about his troubles and felt compelled to help. Cree's pastor contacted Green to find out what more his needs could be. Well, Green responded that he didn't want any money, especially from the church, plus that the chance that the surgery would fail were quite high. Anyway, on top of all that, the chance that the retina would become detached again was also a possibility. Green is not exactly what you'd call a positive thinker here. Green told the pastor that his immediate need, though, was simply for groceries. Green said that he was flabbergasted 
when the Christian folks made good on their promise. And they sent a check for $400. And the money went to buy just that, groceries. But the contributions didn't stop there either. More money was on its way. Green was so amazed by the generosity of the church folks that he said, these people are actually acting the way the Bible says that a Christian should. Jessica Cree says a couple of folks were expressing their resentment about helping someone who was a vocal atheist. Well, that's certainly not a surprise. Jessica, though, had a different viewpoint. She says, I think it's wonderful what God has done here. As for Green, he says that he's going to show his appreciation by buying a new star at the top of next year's nativity scene. Did that change everything? Did that plant the seed? Or did it not? In today's lesson, Jesus is making his way through the villages and through the towns and the region. He's teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Can you imagine how thrilled the people must have been to see him? And then Matthew says something quite significant about Jesus' attitude towards people. He says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. That's important, compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Again, being raised on the farm, I can tell you that sheep, while they are not as dumb as people would like to think they are, still need guidance and certainly do need someone to be caring for them. What an amazing parable this is for contemporary life. We are all feeling helpless, especially during COVID. And we're all feeling harassed because everyone has a different opinion that varies from the extreme right to the left. We're all feeling kind of like sheep without a shepherd. This is a marvelous metaphor, or more properly, a striking simile. Can you not see a flock of sheep milling around in a pen, frightened and confused, as they stumble around, bumping into one another, because they don't know which way to turn? Just like so many people seem to be these days. Jesus had compassion on the crowds because they were harassed and helpless. Sort of like all of us these days. John in his gospel, after giving us that wonderful verse that says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life writes he was given that we all may be saved now i see that as a startling piece of hope and good news for no matter who you are or where you are or what you believe or whether you are in the political spectrum even you know throughout the past throughout the decades, throughout the centuries. Pastors have talked about the flames of hell. And many people, including Patrick Green, our professed atheist, associate Christians with condemnation. And let's face it, we are very good at finger pointing. We're even very good at throwing that first stone. But if you read the Bible, if you understand it, if you dig deeply into the pages, you will understand clearly that Jesus took a different approach. He had compassion. That's what Jesus was all about. 
And that's what you and I need to understand, that no matter who we are or where we are on our life's journey, that I slipped in the mantra of the United Church of Christ, you are welcome in God's kingdom. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out the workers into the field. Who is he talking about here? He's talking about you and I. At that time, he was talking about the disciples. But today, it's us. But please notice, the motivation is the same in both cases. We are to go into the harvest fields because of our compassion for people, for all people. No matter who they are, no matter where they are in that life's journey. That's who we need to be. That's who we need to be all about. We are called to go out into a world because we are the people outside of the walls of the church. We are the people that need to address those who may be even inside the walls of the church, who are confused, who are angry, who are hurting, who are dying. These are the people. These are the families that we are to engage with. Young minds destroyed by drugs. Old people who are feeling lost and alone. People outside of this building who are just angry, who don't know where they fit in. People who are suffering from apathy who don't care about the church anymore, who think that's no longer relevant. We're to go out there and bring them all to Jesus. So this is my rallying call to you. To show love. To show compassion. To speak boldly of your faith. No matter where you may be on your life's journey, Wherever you may be on this broad political spectrum right now, you are called first and foremost to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So get out there. There are ears that are just aching to hear. And God bless you today on your journey. Be with me for a moment of prayer. Wondrous God, you have called all of us to be your disciples. It is true. We are all different in many different ways. We are male and female, black and white, rich and poor, gay and straight, but nevertheless are your children. May we be called into your service this day, and may you embolden us with your love. Amen. God bless you. Take care. Get out there and make a difference in this world. Thanks for sharing with me today. Amen.